On today's episode of I Play Thousand Year Door in some stupid and funny way, I decided to tackle a pretty well-known and very difficult rule set within the Thousand Year Door challenge running community, Level Zero. This essentially boils down to not leveling up Mario for the entire game, making him go from start to finish with his early game stats. Mario starts with 10 HP, 5 FP, and 3 badge points. Now the game does consider Mario at level 1 to start with, so the difference between a level 1 challenge run and a level 0 challenge run is that in level 0, Mario isn't allowed to use those 3 badge points either. So I am simply stuck with 10 health and 5 FP Mario with no badges at all. Special moves, items, and partners are all fair game, but you're also not allowed to rank up partners from their base forms, which limits them a lot more as the game goes on. There are a couple ways to go about actually setting up this challenge if you're insane enough to be following along at home. The easiest way to do it is to simply play on an unmodified copy of the game and select badge power every time Mario levels up. Then you just don't use those badge points and it's the exact same thing as never leveling up at all. Since I'm playing on an legal Nintendo hardware, I just applied an action replay code that keeps Mario's star points count at zero no matter what. This looks a lot cleaner for the video and actually makes the game even harder because I won't get any level up heals throughout the entire story. The only other caveat I wanted to mention is that during the prologue, I bought and equipped the Peekaboo badge from Dazzle. The only effect that this badge has is that it displays enemy HP and I always try to play with it while doing challenge runs since it makes it much easier for you guys at home to follow along. Other than that though, there's no other asterisks or anything to mention. This challenge does have very simple rules, but trust me when I say that it gets very painful. Anyways, the only thing left before we get started is that my lawyer told me that I have to tell you guys to subscribe. I hate asking for people to subscribe before you've even decided if you like the video or not, but the truth is that it really works and helps remind people to subscribe if they meant to but forgot. But enough of that, let's get into the level 0 run. The beginning of the game really isn't interesting at all under this rule set compared to a normal playthrough. I mean, during the prologue you're stuck at level 1 anyways and barely have any badges to use, so I just chug through it like normal. I'm really only talking about this segment for the sake of being thorough, I used fire flowers against the Goomba trio and the big blooper for the sake of cleanliness, and I ignored all the other encounters in the sewer. Now this challenge takes a page out of Sticker Star's book and makes regular enemy encounters totally pointless by removing experience but still making it cost resources. Because of this, I just ended up ignoring most of the encounters like I've been doing in my recent challenge runs. I got lots of practice during the minimum turns run and during the partners only run, so now is as good a time as any to put it to good use. Similar to the prologue, this chapter is too early into the game to really provide much difficulty with an early game Mario. I went through all the normal required encounters, using a couple POW blocks to kill the bald clefts and bristles, and a couple fire flowers to kill the fuzzies in Schwank Fortress. All of these fights would still be reasonably easy without items, but items make them much faster. Gold Fuzzy goes down after a few jumps, and Red Bones and his goon squad go down with a fire flower and POW block. When it comes to Hooktail, you might be wondering if I'm allowed to use the Cricket sound effect badge or not, since it costs 0 BP to equip, but still does provide a functional purpose. I personally thought it was fair game since Mario would still be able to put it on if he was actually level 0 in what the game considers, but I decided to double check with the challenge wiki to see what they had to say. And it looks like there's no mention of the attack FX badge at all, so I went ahead and equipped it for Hooktail. Without having power bounce or being able to rank up either partner, the Hooktail fight takes quite a bit to get through. After a couple hits with the cricket sound though, her attack drops way off and her damage output becomes a non-issue, especially when combined with some super Super guards. I spent a bunch of turns attacking her and eventually she went down, no problem at all. The bosses in this chapter already start to feel a little bit disproportionately strong to me, but with some planning and items they still aren't significant obstacles. Earth Tremor is a fantastic option to use against the Shadow Siren since it can do an easy 6 damage to each of them. I followed that with a power shell from Koops and then managed to miss every single super guard. Luckily though, a jump onto Marilyn and a fire flower finishes the rest of them off before they can attack me again. Inside the tree there's some required battles with the x knots but their health pool is pretty shallow so even my weak ass characters can kill them without issue. So since I learned it was possible in the minimum turns run, I decided to skip the piters in this room again just for fun, and somehow it was more annoying this time? 
but I still did it and eventually reached Magnum Von Groin. Now that I have the super boots, it's actually the better attack option than hammer against this guy, even though he has one defense. Mario's weapon upgrades throughout the game are the only way that he's going to get stronger between now and the final boss, and along with those come new moves to use in battle. Spin jump is generally going to be the best out of all of these since I only have 5 FP and it often becomes worth it to get that little extra bit of damage with FP that I wouldn't have spent otherwise. Magnus's damage output isn't all that impressive, but since the fight with him is going to be a lot longer than if I had actual badges, I do need to strategize properly. I started off just trading hits back and forth on him until he spawned his rocket fists. Once that happened, I hit all of them with an earth tremor which not only got rid of the rocket fists, but did a huge 6 damage to Magnus. When he doesn't have hands, he does this earth shaking stomp attack which can apparently knock Koops over, so I went ahead and swapped over to Flurry. I chucked an HP drain at him since it's an easy 5 damage, and then he respawned the rocket fists. I decided to thunder rage him and then finish off his final point of health with Flurry. Honestly, to some of you, that might just look like a normal, casual Magnus fight, but to me that felt incredibly slow since under any other circumstances I would use power pluses, power bounces, and multibonks. Still though, this is nothing compared to what the late game is going to put me through. And now, time for the good old enemy gauntlet chapter. As per usual, I'll go through my strategies for all of these fights, but I'm gonna keep it pretty brief because there's a lot of them and most of them weren't too hard. I'm used to using different badge loadouts and partner attacks to combo everything to death quickly, but without that crutch, I'm gonna have to find something else to lean on. The Goombas can still be taken out with a power shell even by base coops, and the KP Koopas just take some jump spamming to kill without having to waste items. I killed the Pokies in two turns by using a power shell, appealing to the crowd to fulfill the condition, Super starting the last one with his own body, and then finishing the other two with normal attacks. The Dullbone squad goes down with a power shell, and I killed the Lakitu with an Earth Tremor since Grubba told me not to jump. For the bandits, I got the take damage three times condition, which is definitely one of the worst ones to get for this fight especially. I opened the first turn with Koop's power shelling and Mario jumping on one of the big bandits. I guarded against the first bandit, left the second unblocked, and guarded the other two to take as little damage as possible but still actually get hurt three times. After that, I hit them with an Earthquake item and a jump for Mario to finish it out. I killed the Funky Bunch from Boggly Woods with a bunch of normal attacks, killed the Bald Clefts with an Earthquake, and then took out the bob -omb team with an Earth Tremor since Grubba gave me the special move condition. Against the Iron Clefts, I hit them with a Gulp, crazy, I know, to use the only move in the game that can damage them, and then I appealed a couple times to get some star power for a sweet treat. I had to do this instead of using a Honey Syrup since Grubba gave me the Don't Use Items condition, and I needed to heal my FP back up for another Gulp to kill them. Oh, and by the way, for this playthrough, I named my Yoshi Zero after the level zero challenge, which is probably the most proper actual name he's had so far in any of my challenge runs. Grubba gave me what is consistently my least favorite condition against the red spike tops. Take damage five times. I don't exactly have a lot of health to work with here, so I let Yoshi tank some damage from them while spamming appeals and sweet treats to sustain myself. Once that was said and done, I got some super guard damage on them and killed them with a gulp. I kept the bristles simple and killed them with an earthquake, and then I tremored the shady Koopa's earth and finished them with an ice storm. Three things are true about the Armored Harriers rematch. One, it's optional. Two, it's exactly the same as the first time. And three, it's really annoying, so I just ran away and took the social L for Mario, but the W for my laziness. An earthquake and Yoshi attack kills the fuzzies super cleanly, and then I actually took out the magic Koopas with a single gale force from Flurry, which is always fantastic to watch. Bowser is optional just like the Iron Clef rematch, but since it's a unique fight and an actual boss, I decided to fight him even though it doesn't give me any star points. It pretty much boiled down to me trading hits with him back and forth while healing with Sweet Treat as needed. I had forgotten that I unlocked the Super Hammer and that it was actually the superior damaging option, but I was reminded of it when the stage electrified him and I had to hammer him not to get shocked. And eventually, I finally wore him down and I won the fight. His damage really isn't anything to write home about, and neither was the battle overall. Against Dark Craw, I got a win before taking 20 HP of damage, which is a pretty forgiving condition. I didn't have any special tricks to use against him, I just attacked with the Super Hammer and Koops while hitting all but one Super Guard, keeping me well under 20 damage. I got the stupid f***ing take damage 5 times condition again against the Hammer, Boomerang, and Fire Bros, so I used an Earthquake and a Jump to kill the Boomerang Bro on the first turn since he had a Super Shroom. After that, they attack spammed me and hit me 6 times, satisfying 
the condition and letting me finish them on turn two. Grubba apparently derived some sort of weird, twisted pleasure out of seeing me hurt because he gave me the take damage five times condition a second time in a row against the red chomps. I led with a gulp, then let Yoshi take a couple hits. After that, I swapped out to Koops so he could be my defense tank and get hit a few more times to satisfy the condition. Once I got hit five times, I cleaned them up with hammer attacks. Win before taking 20 HP of damage showed up again against the Dark Koo Patrol, and that one actually felt a bit threatening for probably the first time in my entire life. Since he has two defense and my partners aren't ranked up, the only partner that can hurt him at all is Yoshi using Gulp. I'll be honest, I could have gone back to Petalburg to buy another POW block and knock the guy over and make him absolutely free to kill, but I was way too lazy for that. I spammed Hammer with Mario, gulped with Yoshi, and then used some items for damage and FP so I could finish him with one last gulp. This is going to be the first time in a while that Rockhawk has actually been able to do, like, anything against me, but luckily even my regular attacks feel like they wear him down reasonably quickly. Even without being ranked up, Mr. Zero is able to do 4 damage per attack, which chews through Rockhawk's 40 HP when paired with Mario's 4 damage attacks. Once he enters ceiling mode, I got knocked down to 1 health on Mario, but I still had some HP drains left over from Chapter 2 which knocked Rockhawk down from the ceiling, did good damage, and healed Mario back up all in one move. He did hit me again though, so I healed back up with a sweet treat to be on the safe side. After one more turn of attacks, he went down pretty painlessly. And finally, we reach Macho Grubba. This always feels like a turning point in difficulty for challenge runs of Thousand Your Door, and let me just say, level 0 is no exception to that. Right off the bat, I opened with a spin jump and ground pound combo, which is able to do 10 damage. He always uses his first turn to increase his turns later, so I'm able to repeat that combo to already take out a third of his health before he even attacks me. After that though, he buffs his attack and hits Yoshi for 7 damage. His attacks aren't incredibly hard to super guard, which is lucky because otherwise he would be a much bigger problem. I keep working on his health and decided to top Yoshi off with a mushroom since he's the only partner that can do more than 2 damage and I really just don't want to lose him. Please don't leave me. Grubba buffs his defense and hits Mario for 4 and since I can't do much damage to him when his defense is up, I used a sweet treat to fully heal my health and FP. After that, I went back to spin jump and ground pound combos. I got him down to 6 health but unfortunately he buffed his defense again which stalls things out further. I can do 1 damage to him with the super hammer but Yoshi can't do anything so I just defend with him. I hit another super guard on him and got him down to just 3 health. In the interest of finishing things up this calendar year, I decided to use a honey syrup and a gulp with Yoshi to pierce his defense and kill him once and for all. Super guarding on this fight was pretty crucial to make actual progress on him because having to spam sweet treats in addition to him buffing his defense all the time could turn this into a much much longer fight if you aren't careful. Going from Macho Grubba to Duplis will always be a really funny progression because Grubba is stronger than either phase of Duplis could ever hope to be. As per usual, I didn't mess with any of the regular enemies on the Twilight Trail or in the Steeple, so the segment can just focus on those Duplis fights. Not only is Duplis weaker, but I'm actually significantly stronger compared to the last chapter, and it's all thanks to Power Lift. Power Lift has always been my favorite special move in the game. It costs 3 SP to use, which is a little steep when you only have 4 SP total, but in exchange it significantly buffs your damage output and survivability at the same time. It can prevent you from having to heal for longer while also letting you shred through bosses. It really is a win-win. The only annoying part of it is that it's RNG dependent as to how many good panels spawn, so you can get anywhere from 1 to 5 attack increases and 1 to 5 defense increases. The average if you're really good at it is about 2 or 3 each, which is definitely worth the cost of entry. In this case, I got plus 2 and plus 2, which allows Yoshi to do 7 instead of 4 and adds 2 to each of Mario's jumps as well. This lets me very quickly get him down to the Shadow Mario phase, and from there I can finish him off quickly. He only did one damage to me for the entire fight, so he was literally no problem at all. As for Duplis Phase 2, things are a little spicier since you have to do the first two turns without a partner and he has a Goombella of his own. Funnily enough, the strength of your partners when they're on Duplis' side is actually the same as when they're on your side. If you ranked up Goombella, she has 20 health, can do 2 per bonk, and has access to multi bonk. However, since I'm not allowed to rank them up, she does way less damage and isn't much of a threat. I wanted to stall out my power lift so that Vivian could benefit from the buffs when she finally got her shit together, so I just used a jump on Duplis and he hit me for 4 with the hammer. I used my final extra HP drain from chapter 2 to hit Duplis for 5 and heal that damage back up and then I super guarded both enemies attacks. Vivian finally logged in, so I used power lift and only managed to get another plus 2 plus 2 buff. 
Still, that defense can soak up the extra damage from Miss Super Guards against these relatively weak attacks. With Spin Jumps and Shade Fists, Dupless is not long for this world and I'm able to finish him quickly. Definitely much easier than the chapter before. The few required normal enemy battles in this chapter are trivial, so I won't spend much time on them. You have to fight three different sets of embers across Kiel Hall Key, and I killed all of them with an Ice Storm and a Thunder Rage every single time. There's also some Bill Blasters that are in the way in Pirate's Grotto, and I decided to use some Thunder Rages to kill those too. You could technically just run away from them also, but since you have to pass all of them twice, that seemed annoying to me. Cortez is definitely stronger than Duplis, and probably technically stronger than Macho Grubba, but Power Lift makes him easier than Grubba was overall. I decided to open with Yoshi, which seems like a dumb choice at first since he can't hit Cortez through his one defense, but after a power lift, I have essentially a poor man's power bounce. This time, I got a plus three plus three buff, which lets Yoshi do seven damage, Mario do eight, and only lets Cortez do one to me. With this impressive display of strength, phase one quickly becomes a memory. My buffs carried into the second phase where I was able to do 17 damage in one turn with a spin jump and ground pound. He hit me for a single point of damage again, and I was able to finish phase two by hammering the bone pile. Phase three was a bit messier, but I would say my strategy was solid overall. I swapped to Flurry right away so I could use Gale Force against all of Cortez's weapons. Gale Force is actually the only way to permanently defeat the weapons. If you kill them with damage, they will all respawn after a couple turns. This is probably considered common knowledge, but I figured I'd point it out for those who don't know. I didn't have enough FP for a Gale Force right away, so I tanked a couple turns of damage and then sweet treated to heal everything back up. I got the charge meter almost all the way full for the move, but somehow it still failed against two of the weapons? I've actually never seen this move fail against them, but I guess I just got unlucky. I tanked another turn, sweet treated again, and then blew the other two away the next turn. I swapped back over to Yoshi and then used a power lift again, which makes Cortez's attack pretty much useless and makes mine the opposite of useless. Even with his healing turn, he doesn't last much longer and I take him out. Lord Crump is a similar threat level to Cortez with higher damage but less survivability. Naturally, I opened with a power lift and got a plus two plus three which is decent. Mario's sheer presence and Italian stature is enough to prevent taking any damage on the first turn and then I'm able to already knock Crump down to just six health on the next turn. Mario and Yoshi took a whopping one damage from the x not ceiling attack and then I finished off phase one. Yoshi got one more buffed turn to attack Crump and then my defense helped me tank the x not ball attack. After power lift wore off, I had enough star power to use another and in fact did do that. I narrowly got plus three plus three which seals Crump's fate. Yoshi can hit him with another ground pound, I can easily tank the ball attack, and then a spin jump kills him off. Chapter 6 is always a fun and easy one to talk about since the only required battle is the smorg itself. I don't think it takes a PhD in Bringle lore to guess what strategy I used. I'm a big fan of the mindset that there's no reason to change up your strategy until it stops working and it has definitely not stopped working yet. I used a Thunder Rage to take out the tentacles which is objectively the correct way to fight this boss and then power lifted for a plus 3 plus 2 buff. With that and the extra damage from the Ultra Boots that I unlocked, a Spin Jump and Ground Pound is able to already take the Smorg down to half health. Since he's at half, he respawns with the Claw instead of the Tentacles, which I managed to Super Guard and kill with my still buffed Yoshi. This lets Mario land another buffed Spin Jump, bringing the Smorg down to just 10. Luckily, even though my buffs wore off, I'm able to do an even 10 damage with a Ground Pound and regular Jump with Ultra Boots, finishing off this boss pretty easily. He only actually got one turn to attack, which wouldn't have killed me if I didn't Super Guard it since my defense was buffed, so this is actually probably one of the easiest level 0 bosses so far. As we found out in the minimum turns video, there's only one required battle in chapter 7 besides the actual boss, and it was super easy with my newly acquired showstopper. So let's focus on Magnus Von Grapple 2.0, which is what I consider to be the biggest difficulty spike in the game. I decided to use Bobbery instead of Yoshi this time since he has more health, and Magnus's two defense makes even a buffed ground pound pretty weak. I attacked with Bobbery first so he could be in the front slot and tank more damage, and then I went ahead and used Power Lift. 
I got absolutely rolled on panel spawns and only got a plus one plus two buff, which barely gives me any extra damage against him. I missed the super guard on the drill attack, which already takes a decent chunk of Mario's health, and then I hit him with a couple more pretty weak attacks. He spawned the upgraded rocket fists, which luckily have five health, allowing them to be taken out with a thunder rage. This also puts another five damage onto Magnus, which definitely goes a long way. We traded a couple attacks back and forth, and then I healed up with a sweet treat since Mario only had two health left. If you weren't already convinced that this fight is super grindy under level zero conditions, I would like to remind you that after all of that, I have only done 20 damage to Magnus. After my sweet treat, he respawns his rocket fist, which I have another thunder rage for. He hits Mario down to just one health again, forcing me to use another sweet treat to stay afloat. Magnus then respawns his rocket fists again, but I actually don't mind that at all since I still have more items and he has to burn a turn to do this. Once he gets below half health, he starts using his crowd cannon attack, which is a death sentence for whoever is in the front slot. I made sure that this was Bobbery because I knew this was coming, so once he goes down, I swapped out to Yoshi and then put him in the front slot so Mario couldn't get deleted once again. He spawned the Rocket Fists a fourth time, so I used a Shooting Star this time since it was the only item I had left that would kill them. He used another Crowd Cannon, turning Little Zero into nothing more than a memory, so this time I put Vivian into the fray. I appealed with her a couple times, super guarded the drill attack, and then was able to afford another power lift. I got plus two, plus three, and then the Rocket Fist came out to play again. I decided to use an Ice Storm since I still had one, and that did manage to freeze one of the Rocket Fists. A Spin Jump brought Magnus to just eight health, and then I managed to survive one more turn against him, even with a Rocket Fist active, and that was all I needed. A final Spin Jump took him out. And finally, we arrive at the Palace of Shadow with a still completely unleveled Mario. 10 HP, 5 FP, and then 3 BP that we haven't even been using. At this point, there's more reason than ever to ignore regular enemy encounters due to the fact that they're all essentially boss fights with this week of a Mario, so I did exactly that. On all the bombshell build blasters, I just ran away to scoot past them so I didn't have to actually kill them. All the running away from enemies has really started to take a toll on my audience, since you lose audience members every time you run away from fights. As such, when I went into Dark Bones, there were less than 15 people watching me fight him off. And speaking of Dark Bones, in order to kill him, I kept things super simple and used a Supernova followed by a Thunder Rage. At level 1, Mario literally gains the maximum amount of star points in the game from just 5 enemies, but since I still have that code on, it means absolutely nothing. Next on the chopping block is Gloomtail, who I would say is very similar in difficulty to Magnus 2.0 in most challenges. I first went in with Yoshi, but I had forgotten that I didn't have much SP left from fighting Dark Bones before. I missed a couple Super Guards, and Gloomtail took me out right away giving me the first game over of the level 0 challenge. I went back in with Bobbery since he and Mario could spam Gloomtail with stylish attacks to do some damage while also saving up for a power lift. I got some good super guards in which was absolutely critical and then I managed to match up a mushroom bingo. The health didn't matter since I was still at full, but the audience actually gives you extra star power for a few turns after getting a bingo because they get all hyped and sh I rode this for a couple more turns to take extra advantage of the buff and then I got a plus 2 plus 4 power lift. Bobbery's damage isn't much higher with Power Lift since he only has a single hit attack, but every little bit counts. Some spin jump attacks were able to do some more damage to Gloomtail, and I very crucially super guarded his jumping ground shake attack. I'm pretty sure this attack goes through defense and would have killed Mario, but luckily I didn't have to find out. After some more damage, he charged up for his Mega Breath attack, which would have 100% killed me if not for the fact that I super guarded it. After that, I threw down another power lift, which gave me a huge plus four, plus three, and I landed a flower bingo that didn't actually matter, but added to the swag factor, which is equally important to winning. Once I had that last buff from power lift, I was able to do enough damage to finish Gloomtail off. Since there's no way for me to heal star power without going all the way back to Rogueport for an inn, I took some time to grind star power against the bones enemies in the riddle tower that I had to beat anyways. This would make the next boss, the Shadow Sirens, much less of an uphill battle than it already was going to be. I entered the fight with 6 SP, Coops, and a Dream. The reason I picked Coops was because I thought that using power lifted power shells would be a strong choice to damage all of them, but honestly targeting all three of them at once is really not a good strategy here. Duplice's attacks are easy to super guard, so he's definitely the lowest threat, but Marilyn and Beldum are bigger issues. Beldum's icy wind can be pretty hard to time correctly, and if it freezes you, it's completely game over. Marilyn, though, is the biggest threat here for one specific reason. If she charges up and then decides to use her thunder attack, 
you're done for. It's one of the few attacks in the game that is totally unsuper guardable for some reason, and with a charge she does 14 to each character. If I had remembered to bring life shrooms this would be less of an issue, but I didn't and decided that I'd only go back to get them for this fight if I absolutely had to. She went straight for the charge and lightning combo on my first attempt, so on the second attempt that gave me the chance to abandon the coop strategy in favor of Yoshi who is much better against single targets. I got a plus two plus two power lift and went to work. I decided that my best course of action would be to target Beldum first since she has less health and would be easier to get out of the way, and then I'd focus down Marilyn. This plan of attack required getting lucky enough for Marilyn to not charge and lightning combo me, but required less difficult super guards against Beldum's Ice Wind. On the first turn, I hit a perfect super guard sweep against Dupless, Marilyn's Punch, and Beldum's Ice Wind, and then I laid down some more big damage on Beldum. On the next turn, Dupless turned into Yoshi, which is fine since even if I missed his super guard, he can't damage me with my defense up anyways. Marilyn charged up, and Beldum tried to give me the slow status, but I blocked it. I decided to play things safe and swapped over to Vivian to use Veil to hide from the lightning attack, but I apparently overreacted because Marilyn just used her regular punch attack anyways. Beldum then buffed Marilyn with the increased turn status, which is pretty dangerous, so all I could do was cross my fingers. She punched me, which I super guarded, and then she charged up again. Since I had so much star power, I decided to use a supernova which did big damage to Dupless and Marilyn and finished off Beldum's last single point of health. I went ahead and used Veil vale again, and this time it was worthwhile because Marilyn tried to strike me down with the Might of Zeus. She then charged again, which gives her a free turn to attack me after Veil vale wears off. Luckily though, she chose to punch again, and I was able to super guard her and live on. I used Vivian's next turn to heal Mario with a whack a bump, and then I began chipping away at Marilyn with normal attacks. She didn't use her lightning attack again at all, so eventually she went down. I swapped over to Koops for finishing Dupless off since the stage had electrified him, and Koops is one of the only partners that's able to hit through that, but also because if Dupless chooses to transform into Koops, I can jump on him to knock him over and make the rest of the fight completely free. Even though he didn't end up transforming into Koops, the rest of the fight was still free because Dupless is weak as hell. I'm really surprised I was able to do that fight in only two attempts given how luck dependent it is without life shrooms. Now onto Grotus, where this time I actually did have a couple life shrooms because you can find them in the second half of the Palace of Shadow. I used a Thunder Rage to kill all the Grotus Xs so they don't trample all over me on the first turn, and then I used a Power Lift. Superguarding his lightning attack isn't too hard once you get a feel for it, and it's pretty crucial for surviving more than a couple turns in this fight. I hit him with a couple normal attacks, and then he got back up to four Grotus Xs, so I used another Thunder Rage with Yoshi's turn. Mario was able to bring him down to 19 already with another spin jump. Grotus tried to time stop me a couple times, but luckily that move doesn't do any damage, so it's pretty easy to time a regular guard and avoid it. Once my power lift wore off, I went ahead and refreshed it. I could have finished the fight from here easily enough without it, but I didn't want to take any chances. I used a shooting star with Yoshi here instead of just attacking because each Grotus X actually increases Grotus's defense by one, so this would hit him for six and lower his defense for Mario to finish him off with one final jump. This fight was surprisingly easy, but the part that makes this a lot more brutal is the good old Bowser encounter that happens immediately after. If I lose to Bowser, I have to fight Grotus all over again, so let's head into it with our heads held high and our fingers held crossed. I had nearly enough SP for a power lift, so I went ahead and used a stylish ground pound with Yoshi against Kami and then lifted my power. All of Bowser's attacks are really easy to time the super guards for, so killing Kami would pretty much put me in the clear. I blocked Bowser's fire and took a hit from Kami on their first attack turn and then was able to put Kami in the dirt after she wasted a turn healing. At this point, I was pretty dry on SP, so I swapped to Bobri and sweet treated to heal Mario back up from the Grotus fight. Bowser got into a bite attack loop where he just spammed it over and over, which he is prone to doing if you super guard it over and over. Luckily, it's his easiest attack to super guard, so I just spent several turns using normal attacks with as many stylish timings as I could to slowly build up more star power. This went on for several turns, and all Bowser did was try to bite Bobri and get super guarded every single time. Eventually, I had enough for a power lift so I could use that to speed up my damage by a bit. I got plus three plus three, which let me hit him with some nasty bombs and jumps. After a few more turns of attacking and super guarding, he went down. Somehow, I managed to first try this fight as well, which means I didn't have to refight Grotus at all. Hitting the super guard on the fire breath at the beginning was probably the most important part of the fight, because once Bowser gets locked into a biting loop, all you have to do is super guard that one consistently, which I find to be pretty easy. And then, there was one. All that's standing between me and level zero glory is the Shadow Queen herself. 
I already knew there was absolutely no hope of beating her without life shrooms, so I went all the way back to Rogueport to change around my inventory. I decided to take a page out of the partners only challenge that I did and fill my inventory up with 10 life shrooms and nothing else, that way Mario and his partner could get a bunch of free heals over the course of the fight. I also made sure to sleep at the inn so I could go into Shadow Peach with full star power. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention this earlier in the video, but I had pretty much unlimited money throughout the entire run since I was able to sell every single badge except for Pikachu. Just by grabbing most of the badges along the way throughout the main story, not even going out of my way to get that many of them, I was able to provide Mario with financial security for life. Anyways, on to Shadow Peach. I had a sneaking suspicion I'd be seeing her more than once, and spoiler alert, I did, but I'll only go through it once since it's not the hard part of this boss anyway. Powerlift has been tried and true so far, so I opened with it against Shadow Peach. I got a solid 3 attack buff and started laying down some damage. I super guarded her first attack, and then she annoyingly buffed her attack and defense on the next turn. This makes her dead hands attack unreasonably strong, allowing her to delete Yoshi and pop a life shroom. Once my first power lift ran out, I refreshed it with another, where this time I was able to get plus 4 on attack. With a ground pound and a spin jump, I was able to get her below 80 health, which triggers the invincible phase. This part is a few turns that are essentially a cutscene where she's still allowed to waste my life shrooms, but this phase isn't the actual interesting part of the fight, so let's move on. There is a degree of planning that goes into taking out the Shadow Queen at level 0, but realistically this is a bit of a super guard execution check. If you do not super guard, I would say about two thirds of her attacks, you have no hope of beating her without using the strange sack from floor 50 of the pit to hold extra life shrooms. I made sure to take full advantage of the guaranteed shine sprite bingo the game gives you by power lifting, taking just enough damage to not pop any life shrooms, and spring jumping to use FP before getting it healed up anyways. I managed to hit a super guard on her big charge up attack that would have otherwise used up two of my life shrooms and I was feeling pretty optimistic at this point. Unfortunately though, my damage slowed down a bit because of a mediocre power lift and then she popped a ton of my life shrooms because I missed some super guards. You can probably already tell that this wasn't the successful attempt because of how much I'm glossing over it, so I'll just skip to the end of this one in the interest of saving your time. I got her down to just two health left while I still had one life shroom, so I thought I had it in the bag. I managed to super guard her hand smack with Mario, keeping him alive with the one health he had left. But unfortunately, she struck down Yoshi and he ate the last life shroom. I then whiffed the super guard on what would have been her final attack, causing Mario to go down and for the fight to be lost. In hindsight, what I should have done was just let the smack kill Mario so that he got healed back up to full by the final life shroom and could have just survived regardless of what happened next, or I could have just you know, gamered up and press the goddamn button at the goddamn right time. This was discouraging because of how long it took to get this far, but also encouraging because I was able to get so close on the first attempt. On attempt number two, I did not get nearly as far. I missed a lot more super guards, and she just hit me with worse combination of attacks overall. She had about half health left this time when she was able to knock Mario down for the final time, but that doesn't matter because on attempt number three, I managed to actually do it. Instead of proceeding with Yoshi, who was still out from the first phase, I decided to immediately swap over to Bobri before powerlifting. Bobri's damage while buffed isn't too much less than Yoshi's, and his extra health will help him use less of my life shrooms and keep the reserve intact for longer. I laid some damage down on her, got my free shine sprite bingo, and then she mowed me down with her charge attack. Since Bobri has 20 health instead of Yoshi's 10, he actually survived this without using a life shroom, so Mario only had to use one. I got into a solid rhythm of hitting super guards, laying down damage, powerlifting, and sweet treating whenever was clever in order to preserve life shrooms. It's surprising how easy star power is to come by during this fight, I was honestly expecting to run out of it pretty quickly, but I was staying topped off relatively easily. At one point I actually snuck in a sweet feast instead of a sweet treat to heal Bobri back up to full. This didn't last long, but at least he was able to tank the damage without using a life shroom. As the Shadow Queen reached lower and lower health, I was still holding on to a few life shrooms, but hitting more super guards was absolutely critical to outlast her. I managed to block the charge up attack with which is incredibly satisfying every time. With just 19 health left, she went for another charge up attack right after the first one. I checked my inventory and I still had four life shrooms left. I had one. Her charge up attack would consume two of those, meaning I still had another turn's worth of survivability after that. Doing 19 damage in that amount of time was easy, so it was just a matter of pressing the buttons. A bomb brought her to 16, and then an ultra hammer to 11. I managed to super guard the charge attack a second time in a row just to flex, so I used another bomb and another hammer to bring her to just three. 
I could have honestly finished her with an art attack here, but I wasn't worried about strategizing anymore now that I had such a cushion left. I blocked a couple hand attacks, but she did manage to pop two of my life streams with her status cloud attack. But after all of that was said and done, I was finally able to finish her off and beat Thousand Year Door without any star points and without any badges. Level 0 was a super interesting challenge to tackle. I wasn't expecting the early game to be very hard, and it definitely wasn't. Chapters 1 and 2 were slower than usual, but not much harder. Chapter 3 brought some difficulty, but then 4 was super easy. 5 had a couple tough bosses, 6 had one pretty easy boss, and then 7's boss was pretty strong. Chapter 8 is really the only point in the game where I would say that level 0 becomes unreasonable for the average Thousand Year Door player to complete. The fights start to require super guards much more than they require strategy. There is actually an extra rule set for this challenge on the wiki called Level 0 Scavenge, which only allows you to use items that you find during the course of the story, you aren't allowed to buy items from shops, and this does sound like an interesting extra layer of difficulty. Obviously, I'd save up every life stream over the course of the game for the Shadow Queen since I didn't use any on any other other bosses, but I would still not have an inventory full of them so she would be a lot harder. I don't think this rule set is interesting enough over regular level 0 to make a whole video on it anytime soon, but maybe further in the future I'll feel like trying this challenge again and making it even harder. Anyways, as per usual, make sure you comment down below if you want to see me tackle the Pit of 100 Trials under level 0 conditions. This might be a horrible promise for me to make because it might be way harder than I'm imagining, but I'm already imagining it to be pretty hard so I guess we'll have to find out if that's what the people want. So if you made it this far in the video and still haven't subscribed, what are you even doing? There's no shot a non-Thousand Year Door or non-Bringle fan would be watching this still, so if you aren't subscribed, then make sure you hit that button because it helps me keep making more of these videos. And also be sure to like the video because that tells YouTube they should recommend my content to more people. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time.